Crazy Train Guy presents an Okanagan Valley Railway production. Another episode of How Did He Do That? In this episode of How Did He Do That, I'm going to demonstrate how to make log loads. Not only just regular log loads, but log loads that are removable. So you can take them out like this. And you can put them back like that. I originally wrote an article on this for Canadian Railway Modeler Magazine in issue Train 13, Track 6. That was in the February-March issue of 2005. So if you have that issue, by all means, you can check it out. All the information is in there as well. Here's a picture from my old train layout that I had when I lived in Newmarket of one of the finished log loads back when the article was written. So basically the rundown is that I had a bunch of uh, roundhouse bulkhead flat cars and I wanted to have these removable log loads so that the, the loads are going one direction, the empties in the other, and yet easy to, to pull the load out and put it back in. So my parents had a uh, camp up in Wawa, Ontario, uh, where I usually take my wife and, and, and uh, kids up for a, a vacation every summer. Well, lo and behold, didn't we end up with a miserable rainy week? What are you going to do? Well, I had this in my mind about making these log loads. And I was literally surrounded by trees. So I sold on the spruce as it tended to have nice small branches. And I went around in the area and just clipped off a bunch of little branches that I could use. Uh, basically looked at uh, thicknesses of about an eighth to a quarter inch. Uh, I mean, it, you can use your own judgment on how thick you want them to look for realism in the, in the size of the logs. And then I had a, uh, a tool I bought from Craftsman back in the days of Sears. It was called a handy cut, which is a nice uh, cutting tool. You could use anything else that makes a nice solid cut. And I proceeded to uh, cut all these logs up and fill up a bunch of Ziploc bags. Um, as I mentioned, it rained all week, so didn't have much else to do. And then I took them back to my house, and then I started to build the log loads there. So here I am with my roundhouse bulkhead flat car with a removable load. Now on the bottom of the removable load, you'll see there's a strip of cardstock. You can use cereal box, shoe box, whatever you got. It's seven and a half by three quarter inches wide. So I made a strip for this project. There's my handy clippers. I make a nice clean cut. So each log is an inch and three eighths wide. You see as per the ruler there. What I did after I cut one is I used it as a template going forward. So then I get some white glue, my handy dandy glue brush. And just start Gluing on, putting the glue onto the strip of cardstock and putting the logs down. It's a bit of a process, but you know, you work away at it. So basically, you do the first level here, and then after each level, you have to let it dry. I usually let it dry um, at least a couple of hours. You can let it dry overnight, it'll take you forever that way, or you can do four or five cars at a time. And then basically, uh, eventually build up to the height that you want for your load. So here's the finished product, or at least the one row that I did in the demo video. And then here's the full load on the same bulkhead flat car. So basically you can see you can build up to the height that you see as being suitable for the cars on your layout. I also wanted to build loads for my logging truck, which is a resin kit, which you can see here. And in that case, I had to custom do the width again, it's a narrow width. And as you can see, once again, the loads are removable. And they came out quite nice as well. So that's it for my video with regards to building log loads. It's relatively simple, but can be a tedious process. But as I mentioned in my original article, it will keep your hands out of the chip bag. Thank you for watching this video. If you like what you saw and wish to see more content on model trains and real trains, please subscribe to my channel.